paper like me. You need people like me so you can point your f***ing fingers. I say, that's the bad guy. That's the bad guy. Okay, we'll start with this. Rumors abound. According to the Instagram account of 25-year-old Commonwealth champion Ticey Gallagher, the EBU has ordered 28-year-old EBU Super Bantamweight champion Laura Grisev to defend her title versus Gallagher next at a date and location to be determined. It's a pretty even fight. Could turn out to be a close fight. Laura Grisev is with Knockout Boxing Promotions over there in Poland. A very well-to-do promotional outfit. She's got some money behind her, sporting a professional record of nine wins, no losses, no draws, with three knockouts. You get the sense that if the fight takes place, it will take place in Laura Grisev's neck of the woods. It will take place in Poland. In fact, I don't think Laura has ever fought outside of Poland. Laura Grisev, who at the start of her career was with another well-to-do Polish-based outfit in Timex Promotions, who at that time was promoting her and Eva Brotnitska. She eventually jumped ship from Timex and crossed over to Knockout Boxing Promotions, another good promotional outfit based out of Poland. And I feel like if the fight happens, they'll be at the helm of promotion. The fight with Ticey Gallagher, who sports a professional record of six wins with one loss, no draws, and no recorded knockouts. None yet, having never been knocked out in seven professional bouts. Somewhat less experienced than Laura? Last in action this past April, racking up a career-best win over amateur standout Lisa Whiteside. Ticey Gallagher's lone defeat came at the hands of Nina Hughes, the bantamweight division's current reigning WBA champion, lost a majority decision. She suffered that loss to Nina in July of last year and rebounded that same year in December and she's already fought this year back in April. The win over Lisa Whiteside. Laura Grisab was just as busy last year as Ticey Gallagher. Laura saw action three times last year and she's already seen action once this year back in April opposite the ring Italy zone Maria Secchi. Close fight, tight fight between Laura and Maria but Laura won it. This fight with Ticey Gallagher could prove to be a close fight and a tight fight for what is the EBU Super Super Bantamweight title, Super Bantamweight, that's where Ellie Scottney reigns as that division's IBF champion. Yamilet Mercado, she's got the WBC, Marjolaine Rivas, she's got the WBA, and Sigaline Lafarve of La France, she's got the WBO. The fight between Ticey and Lara will be for a regional title. The EBU title, Ticey Gallagher, a young fighter, only 25 years old, good physical dimensions for a Super Bantamweight, long and limber. Good straight punches, good feet. She doesn't have any recorded knockouts none yet, but there does seem to be some mustard on those shots. Some mustard on that hot dog. Last in action opposite the ring, amateur standout Lisa Whiteside. No, Lisa. She had a hanker in for an Ebony Bridges fight. Spent a lot of time calling her out just to end up losing to a less experienced fighter. Less experienced Ticey Gallagher. She's supposed to be fighting Laura Grisev very soon. Laura Grisev, a young fighter who shows good mobility, good speed, just like Ticey Gallagher, though somewhat more herky-jerky. More fidgety. More Bouncy, bouncing in and out of striking distance. Her punches seem shorter to me. Shorter. Shorter than Ticey Gallagher's. Snappier. There are similarities between them. There are similarities between Laura Grisep and Ticey Gallagher, but I think Laura is a bit faster. Faster to the eye. This has all the makings of a close fight, a tight fight, and home field advantage. That will have its role to play. I feel like Ticey Gallagher's best punches are her straight punches. Her straight punches from the outside coming in or from the outside fending off. From the outside, staying outside, fending off an oncoming opponent. Ticey's best punches are her straight punches, whereas Lara's best punches are her short hooks. Short punches, mid-range to inside, very snappy, very quick. Distance control for either fighter, I think, will prove difficult. Where Ticey's gonna want enough space to get off straight punches, Lara is gonna want to get in close, and that creates an environment to where there might be a lot of wrestling, a lot of clenching, that in trying to manage the distance, both fighters may end up entangled in each other's arms. Yeah, I could see that. Ticey's gonna want to set up Lara for straight punches. That straight right hand, it's a good right hand, a strong right hand. She's gonna need room to set her up for that shot, whereas Lara Grisev, being as bouncy 
and as fidgety as she is, bouncing in and out of range, there's a chance that in trying for a shot, she may overshoot it, overshoot the distance, and end up in a clinch. This fight could get messy. Thus, home field advantage, and who's got it, in the event of close rounds and tight rounds, that will have its role to play in all of this, and I anticipate that it will be Laura Grzeb that gets home field advantage, that if this fight happens, it'll be in her neck of the woods. Don't think this is gonna be an easy fight for either fighter, if I'm being honest with you. Hard to say that any one fighter is head and shoulders above the other in terms of levels. I feel like Laura Grzeb and Ticey Gallagher they're just about even. Yeah, Ticey's got a loss to Nina Hughes, but Nina's no slouch, and it's not like Laura Grzeb has fought somebody as talented as a Nina Hughes. She hasn't. In any event, the fight hasn't been made yet, so let's cross that bridge when we get to it, and we'll talk more about the fight once there is a fight, once there is a fight date, and as that fight date approaches. In men's heavyweight news, Eddie Hearn on Joshua versus White 2. It's the biggest fight for DAZN so far in the United Kingdom, what looks to be the biggest fight in the UK this year overall. Now we know that Tyson Fury is going to be fighting Francis Ngannou, and it's not even going to be in the UK, it's going to be in Saudi. Not the UK. Making Joshua versus White 2 perhaps the biggest fight the UK will see this year. Matchroom Sport chairman Eddie Hearn said, this is a fight I still can't believe is happening. This is a massive fight for the heavyweight division. Little more than seven years ago, these two came head to head. I saw a picture earlier and they are unrecognizable to where they are today. Some seven years on, two world heavyweight titles and a plethora of huge heavyweight fights between them in sold out stadiums and all around the world, these two heavyweights collide in London once again. Victory in the amateurs and victory in the pros. Some are calling this the decider. I call it a must win for two of Britain's biggest heavyweights. This fight has been absolutely everything and it is the fight that both guys wanted. We can also announce that having gone on sale this morning, this fight has completely sold out. Proving that in spite of what Anthony's detractors might think, he still draws, he still draws well, and there is an appetite for this fight. It's a huge fight for British boxing, and it's a huge fight for the heavyweight division. This is a fight that the British boxing scene needs. It is the biggest fight for DAZN so far here in the UK. Just thinking about the heavyweight landscape, what's going on? It was announced earlier today that Tyson Fury will in fact be facing Francis Ngannou in Saudi Arabia, in Riyadh. Comparing Matchroom's announcement to Queensbury, what is actually delivering for the fight fans, the boxing fans, boxing in particular, and what is actually delivering for the UK boxing scene? You have Joshua versus White 2 and Fury versus Ngannou. Fury versus an MMA fighter. What is a shameless cash grab, and what kills me is that if Anthony Joshua wanted to, while Tyson Fury was all wrapped up with Usyk, trying to fool the world that Usyk's the reason the fight collapsed. Anthony could have pursued a fight with Francis Ngannou. Oh, yeah. He could have shot for the same shameless cash grab that Tyson Fury is now shooting for, but I've no doubts that if he did, he would have been criticized for it. Lambasted. Even though he doesn't have a belt, he's not a champion. Even though he, unlike Tyson Fury, wouldn't be holding anything up by fighting an MMA fighter in a novelty fight, he would have gotten criticized for it, whereas Tyson, Tyson Fury... They're pulling punches. I don't think the box community at large in the journos are letting him have it the way they should let him have it, criticizing him enough for it. They're not. Now, Eddie Hearn reckons that Anthony Joshua versus Dillian White 2 does between 500,000 and 800,000 pay-per-view buys domestically. It might. Because it's the only big heavyweight contest set to go down in the UK this year. If Tyson Fury is going to be boxing an MMA fighter in October, well, that's not really even a boxing match. That's a circus fight. We all know how those circus fights go. That contest, if you even want to call it that, largely favors Tyson Fury, whereas if you want to see an actual fight, an actual contest, Joshua versus White. And Joshua versus Wilder later this year. That's what you have to look forward to. Anthony Joshua who says, I've got White in front of me. The Wilder fight would be amazing but I'm not waiting around. Addressing the amount of time spent over the years chasing a Wilder fight and chasing a Fury fight. Time wasted. Forget Wilder and them, Joshua stated to the point of interrupting a question posed by promoter Eddie Hearn during a press conference held this past Monday to formally announce the Joshua versus White rematch. It's been 
been going through my head for so many years now. I've seen the shenanigans in the heavyweight division. I'll be for real. You've seen lineal WBC heavyweight champion Tyson Fury saying he was training for Usyk. Sugar Hill came out and said, no, I'm not training him. You can see all the lies going on. I don't waste my time with time wasters. Late last year when Tyson Fury fought Derek Chisoria, a pointless exhibition, a pointless third fight that looked more like a sparring session between two old buddies, the ex explanation, the justification for it was that he would fight Usyk earlier this year, and it became very clear very quickly that Fury sabotaged the Usyk fight, that it was never really his intention to square off with him from the time it got moved to Saudi over to the UK to, to Tyson Fury's unreasonable 70-30 split, the split that Usyk accepted, to it then becoming about the rematch clause and what the split would be for the rematch clause in the event that Usyk won, it became very clear very quickly that Tyson Fury was doing everything everything he could to sabotage that fight. Though if it was never his intention to fight Oleksandr Yusik, then why'd he fight Derek Chisora last year? What was the point of that? That was a pointless cash grab. That's what that was, and that's what this is. This upcoming Francis Ngannou circus fight, this exhibition match, you can't think that he's gonna go from boxing a non-boxer, an MMA fighter, straight into the undisputed title fight with Usyk. He's not. What you have to start to ask yourself is, how could anybody still be a Tyson Fury fan at this point when the whole point of being a Fury fan is being a boxing fan first. I mean, if you're watching that fat bag of milk, I'm going to assume it's because you're watching him box. You want to see him box, presumably against other boxers, other high-level boxers, the way you think that he's a high-level boxer, and in that way, he's not delivering. He's not delivering to his own fans. Not with a fucking Nganu fight. Anthony Joshua continued, I can be here like I'm gonna smoke Dillian, I'm gonna run through one. Wilder. Then I'm gonna fight for the heavyweight championship. But that's projecting a false narrative Joshua told to Zone after the press conference. It's not reality yet. What my reality is, I got Dillian White in front of me. Wilder, of course, that would be amazing, but I'm not waiting around. I could have waited, but I need to stay consistent. I need to fight. I don't know what he's doing with his career. He ain't fought since October. That was one round. I just need to crack on and do what I need to do. Pretty much. Joshua versus White is still a big fight. And if nothing else, it's just a tick over, a prelude for an even bigger fight, a real fight later on this year. Whereas Fury, Fury wants to waltz around the ring against non-boxers. Whilst holding a heavyweight title. He's quite literally holding up the crown jewel of this division, in many ways the crown jewel of the sport, the undisputed heavyweight championship. And what he rather do is play dancing bear. Fight in a circus fight. It's ridiculous. I'm, uh, I'm not inventing, I'm just commenting the fact. He's running away from Alexander Usyk, and this is a fact. Uh, he's, now, he's now trying to fight some, I don't know, some game-changing opponent but uh, let us see who is this opponent how dangerous is he is the game changer there's rumors that that is obviously going to be francis and garner who's mma oh no that's too dangerous <laughs> the only thing i am really negative about is that this um comprehension of the idea that tyson fury is rich is recognized is uh is well known, famous, only for one reason, because he has fans who made him rich, buying tickets, buying his uh, merchandise, merchandise, buying pay-per-views, uh, making contracts for, for the advertising, whatever. So it all generated. So the money he has on his account is the money that came from his fans' pockets. But fans want to get something back in return. And now, the thing everyone wants to get, Tyson does not give them, give it to them. They want to see the big fight, and Tyson tries to avoid it. He doesn't give the big fight to the fans, and that's the only thing that fire, that fans will never forgive him. So he has to fight Usyk. He has to make this huge 
absolutely huge fight of the century. Frank Warren's justification for this circus fight is, why did we make the fight? Because we tried to make the fight with Usyk, we tried to make the fight with Anthony Joshua, and neither of them wanted to know. That's bullshit. The Usyk people have made it crystal clear that beyond the Dubois fight, they want Tyson Fury in Saudi, and the Saudis themselves have made it clear. They have a commitment to that fight, they want to do it this December, and it's Fury. All Fury had to do was find some Joe Blow to keep busy with over the summer. That's it. And that's all. Frank Warren has stated the Tyson Fury versus Francis Ngannou on October 28th in Saudi Arabia is not an exhibition bout, but said he is unsure whether it will count on their official boxing records. He added that Fury's WBC heavyweight world title is not on the line, and while it's not on the line for Francis Ngannou, it's not on the line for anyone. It's not on the line for anybody, and it hasn't been this entire year. This is what Tyson Fury's reign as a champion looks like. Krasiuk is right. He's running from the Usyk fight, and if you see it some other kind of way, you're likely a very, very big fan of Tyson Fury. Perhaps a bigger fan of Fury than you are of boxing. To still be justifying his shenanigans. All he had to do was find some ham and egg guy to fight en route to the Usyk fight in Saudi where this circus is taking place. He doesn't want Usyk in Saudi, but he wants Nganu in Saudi. On October 28th, this has war written all over it. It is a game changer. Here we are in a super fight. Tyson is at his best when he is breaking new boundaries and this event is one of a kind. History will be made in Riyadh according to Frank Warren, but He's not changing the game with this novelty act. We've seen fights like this before. How is this changing the game? In what way? We've already seen this dog and pony show with Mayweather and McGregor. I've seen this. The bottom line here is that when the Tyson Fury versus Usyk fight fell apart earlier this year, all Tyson Fury had to do was find some ham and egg guy, somebody in the WBC's rank standings, to keep busy with en route to the Usyk fight they would revisit in December. But he didn't want to revisit it. Not scheduling an exhibition match or whatever this is supposed to be in October, no. in the fall. It was never his intention to fight that man. When Sugar Hill Stewart came forward and stated that he wasn't preparing Fury for an Usyk fight, they were about seven weeks out from the proposed fight date. It's very obvious that he was never serious about doing that fight. It's crystal clear. If you have an appetite for another one of these novelty acts, these circus fights between guys in different disciplines, different sports, you can have Adam Cowboy, but as far as boxing, what this does for boxing... And boxing fans. No, I don't want to see this fucking shit. I want to see Undisputed. That is, I wanted to see Undisputed until I realized Tyson Fury will move heaven and earth to put distance between himself and Usyk because he's never fancied Usyk. He's never fancied that fight. I wouldn't be surprised if they never fight. Surely the succession of fights for Tyson Fury isn't going to be MMA fighter, then Olympic gold medalist, two-division former undisputed current reigning unified champion Oleksandr Usyk. That can't be the succession of fights. And whatever dollar amount he stands to make from this circus... It's the most rewards for the least risks. Whatever he makes, it'll be enough that he's not going to be in any hurry to step into the fire, step into the line of fire in a real fight, a dangerous fight, not a circus like this. Might as well vacate now. He might as well. What do you think? He's going to make all this money from this Nganu fight, then come back to fighting real fighters for less. Real boxers. You already see he doesn't want any parts of Oleksandr Yusik, so who will he fight? He doesn't have pride, you know. And you didn't see AJ shooting for this same pointless cash grab, even though he could have. It's because he has his pride, whereas Tyson Fury, he has no pride. No. Nope. He has no shame. No. Nope. He's a grifter. He's a piece of shit, because what kind of guy lies about giving his entire purse to charity? His entire purse from the Wilder fight to some unknown charity. He's a fucking coward.